Hey folks, today on Crossing South, we learn some of the basics of seamanship in the Ensenada Harbor, and we taste the labor of love of a special doña in the Guadalupe Valley, jams galore. This is happening right now, my friends, right now. What a kite is to a little boy playing on a breezy day is what sailing is to Ensenada. With several top-notch harbors, we find ourselves at the Marina Coral Harbor, really just a hop, skip, and sail away from San Diego. We did this because we wanted to learn the basics of sailing. Well, folks, I'm here in Ensenada at the docks with uh, the Baja Vento racing team and sailing team. And I'm here with Mr. Uh, Felix Cota, right? Uh, that's your name, my friend? That's my name, yes. <laughs> Hello. How are how, you? How you doing? Just fine. Uh, you had a nice run out there? We had a good trial. So what are you guys preparing for right now? Uh, for the San Diego Ensenada race. So to tell me about that race. What's that race all about? Well, that race has been going on for many years. Many years? Same as the uh, uh, Newport Ensenada races. So there's two important races that come okay. to, to Ensenada is the one from the Newport Ensenada race and the San Diego Ensenada race. Uh, that is sponsored by the Southwestern Yacht Club okay. in San Diego. Okay. How long has that been going on and how many boats participate in each it's race? It's been going on more than 50 years and uh, it's about 40 to 50 boats. Wow, that's a significant race. Uh, are normally most of the racers American or like yourself, uh, are there any Me other Mexicans that participate in it? Yes, there are. There's uh, always some boats coming from uh, mainland Mexico or mm -hmm. us in Ensenada. So we caught up with the San Diego Ensenada International Yacht Race at the starting point in San Diego. And boy, it was a sight to behold. They leave in pods of anywhere from one to ten boats. They're grouped by classes according to the type of boat speed as well as other factors. Sailboats always have to be moving. So while they wait their turn for the starting line, they start moving around like sharks until it's their time to cross that yellow buoy. You can see from here our friends from the Baja Vento team. They're the ones with the dark hull, the ones that have the biggest sail. You know, it takes a capable crew to manage a vessel of this sort. Tell me about your team and your boat. Well, first of all, this is an international team. We have uh, 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 David Surveys, professional yachtsman. Oh my goodness. So he is our is, uh, strategy coordinator. And then we have Luis Gianotti and his wife, Claudia, from uh, Argentina, and they're sailmakers. Okay. Tona and, uh, and Willie are here from Ensenada. Locals, okay, that's they're a local, locals. local they're, crew. They're very good sailors. <laughs> Folks, this boat has more bells and whistles than a Bentley. It takes a skillful and knowledgeable team to be effective in a boat like this, which is purposed for competitive racing. We found this boat in, uh, in, in uh, Turkey, really? in Istanbul. It was made and it was a, it's a racer that has a lot of history in the Aegean and the Mediterranean. So I decided to switch it for the boat that I had for this one. And then we completed our Mediterranean journey you traded it outright? Yep. The guy yeah. took well, it? Well, we sold the other boat, but uh, <laughs> we bought this one because okay. we prefer this uh, far more competitive and also more comfortable boat to travel uh, long distances. Baja California is a beautiful sailing ground. Everybody in the world uh, and any experienced sailor knows that uh, from San Diego to Cabaja, it's a, it's, a, it's a paradise for sailors. Really? Beautiful beaches that you find. It's, uh, it's incredible. Compared to the Mediterranean, for instance, there's a lot of life over here. We have two very good marinas in Ensenada, uh -huh. Marina Coral. Okay, which is where we're at right now. Which is where we are right now. And there's uh, Seaport Marina, which is downtown. We, I, I go back and forth all the time, just about every year, from here to Cabo. And then I go from Cabo all the way down to uh, Carelles or Vallarta or Manzanillo. No right. problem. Well, thank you so much for your time, my friend. This has been our time with the... Uh, with the Baja Vento sailing team and uh, 
We're gonna try a little sailing of our own, probably. Uh, not, on a, not on a boat as, as nice as this, but we're gonna try something. So uh, stay with us, folks. Uh, more of Crossing South coming your way. You know, folks, talking with Nacho and the Baja Vento crew kind of motivated me to kind of look into more in, uh, into the sailing experience. So I saw it out here in Ensenada, um, an old chiseled captain that's experienced and can keep us safer than the younger, you know, <laughs> more impetuous ones. And, and I found one. I found Gary. Gary, uh, nice to meet you, Gary. Nice to meet you. Uh, what's your last name, Gary? My Webb. Gary Webb, and you're the skipper of the Sparkle. I am. Is she is she a seaworthy vessel? Uh, she is. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he know, and he knows that because I'm counting on it. <laughs> I I build her myself, and I tried to choose a design that would be ultimately seaworthy. Right, right. So, when did you build this, Gary? It's been 30 years ago. 30 right? years. 30 years this year. Do uh, you think you can teach uh, and take on a, an inexperienced swabby like myself? We'll give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, uh, let's see how the day goes. We're going to go with Gary, and uh, we're putting ourselves in his hands, and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, someone as experienced as you. Let's go, Gary. Here we go. Hop aboard, Jorge. Thank you. Thank you. I have just one firm rule on the boat. Uh-huh. Don't fall off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you built this, Gary. Did you, when you built this, this boat, did you model after, is it a specific model that? Oh, it is a specific design. Um, I chose a design from a Seattle area designer. Um, it was a fairly young fellow, but he was, um, he favored some older style designs. Right. And he appreciated the qualities of, of some of the older sailing boats all from the early part of the 20th century. But uh, just like people, the boats come in all shapes and sizes and, and each has their own personality. Personality. So can well, we, are we ready to take this girl out? We're ready. She has a diesel engine. We're going to start up the engine so... That... How did you release it? How did you, how did you release oh, it? Release with my life. So I figured, easy enough to do, right? Wrong. My glasses are falling off. <laughs> oh. My glasses are falling off. You know, doing this the wrong way makes you waste such energy that it makes me so grateful that our cars today have electric starters rather than a hand crank, like the very first motor vehicles. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I have no experience doing this. <laughs> Woo. We'll try it one more time. Oh, my goodness. You do this every day, Gary? <laughs> oh, boy. I will not be ashamed to have a Gary step in. <laughs> and just when I thought I was a failure at this, my stubbornness paid off. Hey, I did it! Oh, man! Oh, there you go! Oh man! Right now you're handling the the tiller. The tiller. That's what that is. Tiller. That's our steering system. So you, you don't have the steering wheel. You have this. No wheel. Just nope. the tiller. Just the tiller. Yeah. And okay. So just, yeah, you 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 pull it the opposite direction to which you want to go. You might think of it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why we're laughing here. Now, the uh, basic terms, the back of the boat is called? The back of the boat is the stern. The stern. The front of the boat is the bow. Front of the bow. Stern this, and the bow. This boat is a, what we call a double ender, which simply means that both ends are pointed. Any rope that's used to, to pull a sail up uh -huh. is called a halyard. 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 But it, it will be designated by the mainsail halyard, the mainsail being the big sail at the back of the boat. W would this be a halyard? 
No, no, no. no that that's, doesn't... that's actually a gasket. Gasket. Even, even that little piece of line has a name of its own. A gasket. That's called a gasket, and that timber is called a boom. 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 And it lays the boom on anyone who's unwary. We, we, we don't want to boom anybody. Yeah. You don't want to lay the boom on any on any inexperienced sailors like me and like myself. Yeah. So Gary's son, Spike, radios in all protocols to the control tower while I pretend to steer the boat. So how, how do we do this, Gary? I'm, let's pull a halyard and we'll hoist the mainsail. Pull a halyard, tell me which one. Pulling a halyard sounds like I need to go to the hospital, but because <laughs> uh, I pulled a halyard, but okay. It's a pretty simple deal, there she goes. Am I pulling a halyard? You're pulling a halyard, Jorge. Hoist away. Hoist the main. Hoist the main. <laughs> That's what we did right now. We hoisted the main. <laughs> what do we do now, Gary? We're going to hoist the stay sail. Is that as high as it goes? Hold on there, Jorge, for just a moment. I'll come and help you make it fast. When we make it secure, we say we make it fast. We're gonna put it around this pin. Each time it's put around the pin, we always put it together the same way. It's like an eight you're making, right? Almost? Uh, yeah, almost like a figure eight. So Gary showed me how to make it fast, quote unquote. Again, easy enough, right? Wrong. Gary had a very sincere assessment of my seamanship skills. Obviously, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> That's obvious. That's more than obvious. But I know you do, my friend, so let's, let's get this thing out to sea. Well, this can all be taught in a classroom or on, with pictures and circles and arrows and a paragraph describing <laughs> I don't think ones. that'll help someone but, and but yeah. it, but it's much easier to grasp if you can come out here and feel it I've noticed that even children with the opportunity in a very small boat to feel these things in a matter of a very short time a half an hour an hour they'll be able to sail the boat all over the place. <laughs> It, it, it's it's actually a pretty simple thing. Okay. It, with, it, with, if a child uh, can do it, it yeah. gives me hope that uh, I'm not beyond well, help, you know? Look at Gary. Look at it. Oh, you got to look at that. <laughs> there, there might be some places where I just cannot follow, Gary. <laughs> You, you cut this ma this tree, the, the, was this, this mast? I did. It was a Douglas fir tree growing uh, up in Washington, not far from the boatyard where I was working on the boat itself. Wow. Yeah. You actually live on this boat, Gary? We lived on the boat, and I still live on the boat. Wow. Uh, That's truly a, a sea life, a sea man life. <laughs> well, it is. The boat, the boat is home. Uh, that's it. And I understand your son even grew up on this boat, right? My son did grow up He's on part the boat. of our crew. He's, yeah. He's part of our crew today. Back there yep. keeping us also safe. <laughs> That's keeping us out of trouble while we're standing here talking. Folks, it is a sublime experience. No motor sound, just the wind, just the waves, just the breeze on a lovely day here in Baja. Peaceful, inspiring, all the superlatives that come to mind apply here. Now I understand why people are so in love with sailing.
Well, Gary, thank you so much for sharing with us your experience and your beautiful vessel today. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Jorge. My pleasure. So we move now from the beauty of the sea to the beauty of the earth. You know, folks, the Ruta del Vino, the wine country here in Baja, is fast becoming one of the most important destinations in all of Mexico when it comes to tourism. It's a fantastic place. And the more we come to it, the more new places we discover. One such place is La Casa de Doña Lupe. And oddly enough, we have Doña Lupe right here in front of us. <laughs> Hi, you're, you're, Hi. You're, you're Doña Lupe, right? Yes, very <laughs> welcome to our place. We are here all year round waiting for you every day. Thank you, thank so. you. Well, you have a beautiful place. And I've been hearing a lot of good, good things of, of the product that you make. You make a lot of jams out of natural stuff that you, ju you, just, you just grow here, right? Yes. Tell me about your product. I, I've been hearing so much about it, I can't wait to taste it. We make gems of whatever we can find to do it. We grow out here figs, apples, peaches, all kind of chiles that we mix with the fruit. And Wh which one of your jams would you say is your signature? The one that is, we have to, like, we have to get? Okay, the one that sells more is Chipotle Habanero. Oh, really? <laughs> and then Chipotle Tamarindo. Okay. Two. So the spicy ones, those are the, the spicy, spicy ones. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the sweet ones? Which are the ones the that sell the most? The sweet ones that we got, like, uh, um, blackberry and wine, it's very good, too and we got apples with whatever we can mix it. <laughs> whatever fruit is around, right. you go to, and we just try it, and it's okay, we make that. Now, now Doña Lupe, can I, what, what can I call you? Can I call you Doña Lupe, what do oh, I call you? Whatever, you can call me Doña Lupe. Or... <laughs> what would you like to be called? Okay, Doña Lupe. Doña Lupe. Mm -hmm. Doña Lupe, talk to me about your estate. How big is this ranch? I mean, what is it? Tell it's me about, about it. It's about 65 acres, which is about 30 hectares. Okay. And we just have enough to do whatever we please with. How long have you been here? 44 years. 44 years in wine in Baja's wine country. Sí. And And where do you originally hail, hail from? I come from Sonora. From Sonora? Saguaripa, Sonora. It's a little town. From Saguaripa, Sonora? Mm -hmm. You're not going to believe it, but I've been there. Really? And it was hotter than you know what. Exactly. <laughs> right now it's very hot. You know why I stay in Baja California? Uh -huh. I, I was 21 years old. I was going to California and I come this way and it was July. So when we go up to the Rumbrosa, uh -huh. I say, heaven. I'm not leaving I here. I don't go back. <laughs> and I stay since then. So You're like, I'm not going I think Scott to bring me over here because the best place right here. Right. You mind if we walk a little bit your grounds and and, and, yes, and, so. and try some of your delicious product? Oh, okay. <laughs> you take good care of your plants, like you love them. I right? love the plants. I love the trees, everything. I love everything, so the bees The love... bees eat this? Yes. Okay, check it out, guys. These bees produce honey for these people, and these are, these are, these are grape fed bees. So this is probably very good quality uh, honey. So do you think I can try one of these? Yes, you can. Oh, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Well, it might be the largest bee you ever saw. Oh, wow. They're so sweet. They are so sweet. <laughs> I don't know why bees love them. Mmm. They are incredibly sweet. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> very, very nice. You must be a very happy person, right? I'm always happy. <laughs> no matter what. Being in touch with nature. Look at this. Cumulus clouds all over, you know, in the skyline. Beautiful mountains and, and grapevines all around. You're such a healthy person, probably. You're breathing not all this. Only, not only grapevines, everything around. Right, right, right. This right here is Shirley, Doña Lupe's daughter. Hi. And <laughs> Hello, Shirley. <laughs> now, you were telling me something about how workers here don't get dehydrated. We don't get dehydrated. If you notice, and then you taste these, mm -hmm. the grapes are very sweet. They and are. And they're very juicy. So they've got this wonderful flavor, and they've got sugar, and they've got salt in them from the soil. So the workers, you know, they, they, they just take a few, and uh, they're completely hydrated. As you're picking them, 
You eat them. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dare and ask you a no-no to women. Uh, how old are you, Doña Lupe? Eighty-one plus six months. Eighty-one plus six months. Yes. Wow. I'm proud to be 81. A lot of people think, oh, I'm not old, but I love to be old. And, and you're working I, so hard. I work more than when I was 50. Yeah, but when it's work, when, when you love it, it's not work, right? Exactly. They, <laughs> at night, my son, he have to turn off the light for me. Otherwise, <laughs> I just keep going. You keep going, I just... <laughs> well, that's when you find something you love. You're not toiling, so, uh -huh. oh my goodness. Well, we've seen the raw natural product. Now we're going to go try the end result, right? We're going to go try the jam. So uh, stay with us, folks. More Crossing South coming your way. You know, part of the setup that Doña Lupe has here is on the premises. She's got a little store here with all the product that she makes from the fruits and plants that she grows. You have jams, you have marmalades, you have uh, dressings, you have olive oils, wines, all this different kind of good stuff. And she has a table right here where you can actually taste the stuff before you buy it. So, oh, Lupe, this is a really good idea. Thank you, thank you. Very smart. It's kind of like what Costco does, right? <laughs> Black fig. Black fig. Uh -huh. And you see Doña, Doña Lupe's, uh, you know, brand of approval right there. She's putting her face behind her product, so. <laughs> she pulled the tamarind. <laughs> That's it, folks. This is the best seller. Okay. Water. No, I can't. You know, the hotness comes like a few, like 20 seconds afterwards. <laughs> Apple strawberry. She says that'll calm the burn from the chipotle tamarind. Wow. The flavors are phenomenal. They are phenomenal. So I, I just want to know how many can I take? Oh. I love for you to take them. <laughs> you know, this, 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 this pineapple, pineapple, coconut. pineapple coconut seems very interesting. <laughs> and, you, and, and okay, so, and, and these all seem to go very good with cream cheese, right? Mm -hmm. My goodness. You got chocolate coconut, you've got grapes and cream, which is this one. You've got plum peach. Okay. Raspberry with pineapple. Ah, this is very good, then. Choco coco. Mm. Oh. Pepamoso este. These are a kid's favorite. Chocolate coconut. Kid's favorite. That means I'm gonna like it. Yeah. <laughs> Chocolate coconut, folks. I know why it's a kid's favorite. It's fantastic. I'm gonna get this for my daughter right now. Wow. A little secret, folks. These are all fantastic. <laughs> They're phenomenal. They're amazing. Honestly, I'm going to walk out of here with a bunch. I have to say, Doña Lupe, you make a lot of people very happy with these products. And I just saw a, a, a bunch of Americans coming in and walking out like they're walking out of Costco with like <laughs> a huge amount. So. You know, I, I think it's getting out there. You know, you're, you're not a secret anymore. I think people are getting to know that you exist and I can see people are coming in. Thank it certainly you. made us happy. Home. Okay, so. Me, give me a hug. Thank you so much, Doña Lupe. So you know what place we are and you can come over and visit? Oh, we know and anytime, we will. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> so after a day as a swabby on deck, jamming some jams into my mouth, almost throwing my back and meeting the real Dos Equis, most interesting man in the world, it was time to say goodbye till the next time we cross south. You can find maps and information about the places you just saw, or you may order a copy of this program on DVD at CrossingSouth.com. We also do Facebook.